subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello, hello students. Kindly recollect what we have considered yesterday. We have seen when light passes through a parallel sided glass lab like this. The emergent ray is found to be parallel to the incident ray. The perpendicular distance between the two is called lateral shift. We have derived the expression for the lateral shift and we have seen that the lateral shift depends on the thickness of the slab, the material that is the refractive of the material and of course the angular incidence. And we have also <coughs> considered the location of the image formed by an object due to refraction at a single spherical surface. And we have also derived an important relation that the refractive index of the medium is the ratio of the object distance to the image distance or real depth upon a parameter. And we have also discussed the important phenomenon, namely the total internal reflection. So we have seen that when light passes from denser to rarer medium, the, the angle of refraction, the angle of refraction is always greater than the angle of incidence. Consequently, when the angle of incidence is gradually increased from zero, the angle of refraction also increases but much more faster. Now at some stage, at some stage, the angle of refraction becomes a right angle. And this angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is right angle is called the critical angle. And if the angle of incidence is further increased, there is no refraction, there is no refraction. All the light comes back into the same medium. It is called a total internal reflection. The property of light by which, say, when it tries to go from denser to rare medium, it cannot go, it comes back in all, and that is called total reflection. Now, total internal reflection takes place when light tries to go from denser to rare medium, and the angle of incidence is more than the critical. Now, this important phenomenon that is total interreflection. See, we have several consequences in nature. I'll just mention one as an example. Then, see, if you have, let us suppose, in during summer, if you are traveling in a national highway or in a desert, it so happens that the air <coughs> close to the earth, close to the earth, is rarer. Their higher altitudes is denser. Therefore, say from an object, a distant object, light coming from a distant object undergoes progressively, say, deviating away from the normal. And at some stage, it gets total internal refraction. So that the reflected ray for an observer appears to come from here. Now that produces an illusion as if there is water here so that an image is formed. Now this type of phenomenon is called mirage. Mirage. Now again, the phenomenon of total internal reflection finds an important application in optic fibers. So optic fiber consists of a bundle of very thin fibers, as the name itself suggests, very thin, by the order of the diameter 10 power minus 6 meter, micrometer, 
and the core, the central part, is of higher refractive index. The covering, the cladding as it is called, is of lower refractive index. And when light enters axially into the bundle, the fiber as we call it, see it undergoes successive total internal reflection, successive total internal reflection, and comes out from the other end. Now this is possible even if the fiber is bent or even twisted. Now this is called optical fiber. Now it finds application in the telecommunications, the cables that we have for our telephones are made of optical fibers. And then in medical field, they can go into our internal system. So inserting a thin fiber and find out what is going on the uh, deeper down our system. So these are <coughs> two important the applications. Now we move on to another important uh, concept, namely, see if the refracting surface is plain, we have seen that the light going from one medium to another medium undergoes refraction, obeying the two laws of refraction. Instead of the surface being plain, if it is curved, as in this case, as in this case, that is the surface separating the two media is not plain as in this case, it is curved then we call the surface to be spherical. Any curved surface or a <coughs> can be considered to be part of a sphere like this, part of a sphere like this. Now whenever we have a sphere, we have the center, the center of the spherical surface. So is the center of the sphere Center of curvature, see there is a curved surface, can be considered to be part of a sphere. The center of curvature of this spherical surface is the center of the sphere of which the given surface, this is the given surface, forms a part. And the geometrical center is called the pole. It is called the pole as before, as in the case of spherical mirrors. Straight line passing through this is called principal axis, principal axis, usual terms. Now with these two terms, see this distance, see is called radius of curvature, radius of curvature of the spherical surface. It is the radius of the sphere of which the given spherical surface forms a part. Now consider, A spherical surface x, y of pole P. The moment I mention spherical surface, I must specify the pole and specify the center of curvature. So P is the pole of the spherical surface x, y. Spherical surface x, y of four P or this with the geometric center and of center coverage.
on the axis. All these spherical surfaces, x1. A ray, OP, along the axis.
So that equation 2 becomes N1 I. I is alpha plus gamma. N2 R gamma minus beta. Gamma minus beta. We will call this equation 3. 3. Now, see we notice if you have a an arc like this, a small arc like this. Yes. See, the relation is S equals R theta. R theta is S by R. S by R. Now, I make use of that relation, this relation, and substitute for alpha, beta, and gamma, looking at the figure. So, alpha is R A T. So, we have since alpha is for small angles R K P is divided by T O and beta is R K P that is how we write R P I and gamma is R K P divided by Pc. So, this equation, we call this equation 4, say <coughs> say 3, equation 3. Therefore, equation 3 becomes equation 3 becomes I multiply and substitute N1 alpha is R A P divided by P N1 comma N1 comma N1 R K P divided by P C that is equal to that is equal to N2 comma so N2 R K P divided by P C minus N2 beta N2 R K P divided by P I now A B is common in all the terms. Now rearrange the terms. Now N1 PI. N1 divided by PO, I'm sorry, plus N1 by PC. That's equal to N2 by PC. Minus N2 by P. Now look at the figure here. PO is object, is distance of the object from the pole. Remember the sign convention. It is measured against the light direction. Therefore, it is minus U. The other two are plus. Positive. Therefore, N1 <coughs> since PO is minus U, PC is plus R and PI is plus V. Now this equation, this is the same equation as equation 3 if you want to get on it for. Now therefore, equation Four becomes n one by minus u plus n one p c. We are measuring in the same direction. It is plus r that is equal to n two by plus r and then minus n two by plus v. Rearrange the terms. So we have N2 by V transport to the right left side, transpose to the left side, N2 by V. Now this is minus N1 
by u that is equal to you have into by r transposing this to the right side minus n1 by r now that gives you n2 by v minus n1 by u that is equal to taking r out common 1 over r that is n2 minus l1 over r now this is the relation between object distance image distance in terms of radius of curvature and the refinement notice that notice that u and r are variables in other words you can keep the object close to the surface far away from the surface and so on and so forth but the curvature of the surface remains the same the media are same therefore n1 n2 and r remain constant now <coughs> this quantity see the right hand side n2 minus l1 upper r c is called the power of the surface power of the spherical surface now observe the figure power of the spherical surface now i will rewrite that figure in a different manner observe see you have the spherical surface this is the spherical surface ignoring the unnecessary details now this is pole this is center curvature now this is the object that means light is given out from the object now this is how light goes light goes and you have the image formed here you have the image formed here now this is how the image is see refracted rays meet here so light which was divergent now becomes convergent now that is this so this is ability of the surface of the surface to converge or diverge the incident or divergence. So that is an important relation. Now, see if you have a single spherical surface, say like this separating two media, the point of the place of the axis will have its image for that we have seen. Now let us suppose, see this line that is going after refraction the first surface, now falls on another surface which is curved or plane in case mean now this image is formed here now such an arrangement such an arrangement say optical medium whose boundaries the two boundaries are both spherical or one spherical another plane is called a lens now let us see see when this takes place we have derived this relation m2 by v n1 by u is n2 minus n1 by r in terms of object distance image distance and radius of curvature making use of this relation let us derive the so called lens makers for a very popular favorite question now consider <coughs> the lens a thin lens let's suppose that is also important thin lens of refractive index n2 and of radial curvature
R1 and R2. Placed in a medium of refractive depth L1, maybe air, maybe water, anything. Now let L1 be less than N2 so that the lens material is denser, the surrounding material is lighter. Now O is a point object. Point object on the axis on the axis of the lens. Now, light from O light from O after refraction at the first surface would have formed image at I dash but The light after refraction at the first surface again suffers refraction at the second surface. forming image at I like that. <coughs> now see I apply the relation that we have derived for the two surfaces separately. Now for refraction, for refraction at the first surface, from the relation, I make use of the relation that we have derived, n2 by v, n1 by u, n2 minus n1 by r, from this relation. You notice the first surface, this is the first surface, this is the first medium, this is the second medium. So this is N1 here, this is N2 there. So that we have N2 by now which is the object is the image distance here. Now this is the image distance. So it is V dash minus N1 object distance distance the object from the lens. So it is by V, N1 by V. That is equal to N2 minus N1. This is N2, this is N1. Divided by R1. I will call this equation 1. I will call this equation 1. Now similarly, for diffraction, for the second surface, Using the same relation, N2 by V minus N1 by U, N2 minus N1 by R. Noticing that, see this is here, the first medium is this, the second medium is this, here, this was the first medium, this was the second medium. What was second medium now becomes first medium. Therefore, suitably change that. So, N2 now is N1. N2 is N1. This is N2 here, which is now N1. Now image distance. This is the image distance. V 
V minus L1. So this is the first medium. Whose refractive index is N2. So it is N2 by See, the object is, this is object distance, V dash, that is equal to, see, M2 minus M1, this is M2 meter, this is M1, therefore it is M1 minus M2, by R, we call this equation 2, we call this equation 2. Now add these two, from equations 1 and 2, from equations, 1 and 2. See, if you add this and this cancels, you have N1 by V. N1 by V minus N1 by U is equal to. See, these two cancel. So, this is N1 by V minus M1 by U. Add these two. Say N2 minus N1 over R1 plus N1 minus N2 over R. That is N1 of N over V 1 over V minus 1 over U. That is equal to now notice this, this is N2 minus N1, this is N1 minus N2. If I take negative sign out, this becomes plus N2 minus N1. So that I can write this as N2 minus N1 divided by R1 minus N2 minus N1. Please note that. So once again, <coughs> once again, Taking N2 minus N1 common, this is 1 over R1 minus 1 over R1. Now dividing this row by N1, we get left hand side 1 over V minus 1 over U. Right hand side it is N2 by N1 minus 1 that is 1 over R1 minus 1 over R1. Now that gives us that gives us 1 over V minus 1 over U. This can be written as N2 respect to 1. If the object is at infinity, that is, if the object distance is infinity then the image is formed at the distance called the focal length. Now therefore this is 1 over f, this is 1 over infinity that is 0, n2 minus n1 into 1 over r1 minus 1 over r1. Now notice that notice that say here now here, the right hand side is constant. This is refractiveness constant in the two media. Curvatures are constant. Therefore, reciprocal of the focal length is constant. Now, which is called the power? Which is called the power? See, our right hand side is constant. As N1, N2, R1, and R2 are all constants. Now this constant is called the power of the lens. Therefore, power is denoted by P. See P is 1 over F. So this is another rating that we get. Now compare these two equations. Compare these two equations. Let us say this is equation 3, this is equation 4. Now from these two equations, we get from equations 3 and 4, we have 1 over L 
is equal to 1 over v minus 1 over v. Now this is what is called Lenz formula. So we have several important relations here. Now Lenz Maker's formula and Lenz formula. So we will stop here and continue next time. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.